Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for waiting. We are now ready to resume our seminar program for this NAC Breakout Speaking Track. We would now like to invite Mr. Ken Igalashi, Senior Research Engineer, NTT Docomo, and Mr. Jun Ishii, Research Engineer, NTT Docomo, and Mr. Takashi Tori, NAC, to talk about what an operator is doing behind the cloud. Mr. Igarashi, Mr. Ishi, please. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, already mentioned, but the title of the presentation is What are operators doing behind the cloud? So during the presentation, uh, we want to share uh, tools we created for daily operation. Also, we want to share uh, activities uh, operators doing behind the crowd. So behalf of the team, uh, actually already mentioned, so just <laughs> we can skip. So first, uh, let me explain uh, our team's rules. Sometimes we call it a culture. So we are a small team, so just we are focusing on using OpenStack instead of developing OpenStack. And uh, human resource is our key, uh, uh, highly limited resources and most valuable resources. That's why uh, we are key, uh, always thinking of reducing uh, operation costs and uh, promoting uh, automations. So this is a key principle. Uh, anything that a human need to do more than twice must be automated. And uh, in the operation, uh, you can see uh, there is uh, DevOps engineers. And also, we have operators. So we uh, usually call DevOps engineers as L3 engineer. And also, we call uh, operators L1 and 2. And uh, L3 engineers are developing uh, tools to automate uh, operators' tasks. And also, uh, he uh, put uh, softwares and also put uh, instruction to the knowledge base. Uh, today, uh, we have many operation tools. As for the deployment, uh, we have uh, tools to set up a network, Linux account, the logging, install Zabbix agent, and drivers and firmwares. Uh, also, we have our own tool to install OpenStack itself. Also, uh, we actively developed uh, operation tools. Uh, it, it has a process restart, log correction. Also, we can take a usage of OpenStack for uh, charging purpose. Also, we can take a bunch of uh, VM migration and the backup and uh, user manipulation. Also, we provide uh, health check tools. So let me show one example of our operation tool. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the most difficult part of the OpenStack today. Uh, the demonstration is for a neutron network node update. So you can see uh, there is a node we need to up maintenance, but uh, you can see there are still uh, LBS agent and L3 agent in this uh, node. So to maintain the node first, we need to uh, migrate those uh, agents to the uh, to uh, other nodes, and uh, in our case, uh, we are uh, following the list of scheduling and just choose the uh, migration host. So let me show you the, let me show you the uh, demo videos. So, okay. Uh, First, uh, here we have uh, many 
routers in uh, network node called S network 001. Also, uh, here is a, a load balancer agent. And um, here we just list up a bunch of IPs allocated to the uh, router on top of S network 001. And uh, what's next? Okay. Then, okay. Then uh, we ping to all the routers. Then the time for migration. As you can see, uh, there is a Ansible playbook for migration. So we just execute. And uh, during the migration, you will see some packet loss. Now it is migrating. You can see the ping energy is returned. But uh, once migration complete, then we will get uh, all the ping message. You can see now uh, migration completed and uh, all the ping check becomes correct. And uh, you can see uh, there is no more uh, L3 agent on the net network node. Also no load balancer agent on the network node. So this is a before migration. And uh, this is after the migration. Uh, many L3 agents, so modotta <laughs> deoi. <laughs> Let me see the result. So you can see uh, this uh, load balancer was on S network uh, 001, but after we did migration, you can see the same uh, load balancer agent is on network 002. So after migrating, after migrating all the agent, then we can disable the node and uh, we can update the node. And just before uh, bring back to the cluster, uh, we have a check tool. Uh, there are uh, currently we support three types. One is uh, checking access to the VM, also checking access through the load balancer. The final one is uh, checking access through the VPN. So we have a check tool and um, identify whether the update node working correctly or not. And uh, this is a result. And you can see uh, the node is updated, get all the OK message. So all the test passed. Then we can back to the uh, cluster and uh, start using. By using the tool, uh, we can uh, update aggressively of network node as well. So, so far, uh, we are mainly using Ansible for deployment of the operation, and the Python and the shell script are there. And for deployment, uh, common deployment, we have already created like uh, 37 playbooks. Also, uh, we have 62 playbooks for OpenStack deployment. And uh, as for the operation, we have 31 playbooks. So change the presenter. And, uh, um, next, uh, I try to explain the L uh, L1, L2 operations. So after Ken's talking, so it is uh, slightly easier, easier. And so almost all people in here is uh, expert operators. Um, it might be too easy, but so um, please imagine or remember you are the so total 
OpenStack operator. So today is the first day you operate OpenStack. And so what should you do? So this is a very difficult question. So but there are two things to operate an OpenStack system. So just prevent troubles and so uh, deal with troubles. And to prevent troubles, the daily operation is a very important thing. So we call daily operation as a nichoku. Nichoku is a Japanese word. And so in Japanese school, uh, everyone mm, can be a nichoku. So they do uh, daily tasks, routine work in a day. And so it uh, are taken time by every day. So as uh, in school nichoku, uh, we call uh, nichoku all, and so we do uh, every day by each operators. And so in our nichoku, there have uh, check security updates of the last day, and check firmware updates of the last day, and check unhandled unknown alerts last day, and check usage of resources of each node last day, and analy analysts, analyze logs of last day. So too many works are uh, daily task. So it takes almost a day or over a day sometimes to do these tasks without any plans. So we need to um, more simplify these works. Then so uh, we automated uh, some works. Uh, the Nichok person carries out uh, mainly three tools. So Nichok assistant and Zabbix graphs and Kibana dashboards. And so these uh, tools makes easy to do Nichok works. And so uh, by uh, doing Nichoku, uh, troubles are detected earlier than uh, normal alerts. And so uh, then we talk, uh, I talk about uh, these three tools. First, Nichok assistant. So it is a web crawler which is composed of Jenkins job and WordPress websites. And so it is automatically reports on three topics for Nichoku. Uh, it is needed for Nichoku at uh, 9 AM every day. So first is a security updates. And second is a firmware updates of hardware. And last one is a Zabbix alerts. So it saves our time to spend for uh, C each websites, so it is uh, compressed all information. So, and security updates, assistant both the latest security advisories. So, and we check the last Nichok ticket, and so this security information, and compare them, and so there are newly information or not. And so, if you have a new security information, we create a new uh, ticket to uh, update or not. And next, so we are all, uh, also uh, writing about hardware information, uh, such as a load balancers or UTMs or storage or servers. So mm, it is, uh, so honest speaking, it is not completely uh, crawling. Cause, so some sites are very difficult to crawl these information. And so in there, uh, it will be uh, written uh, hardware information and so uh, latest update uh, as same as uh, security reports of software. So, but uh, hardware is a little bit secret information I masked in it. And so it reports a lot of Zafix in last day. So um, some of you think that it is enough to see the Zabbix uh, latest issues, but uh, some of alerts are automatically uh, restarted and so not shown in the latest issues in Zabbix. But this Nichok tool also show these informations. So it is important to know which node is uh, have have alerts and so automatically restarted or not. So these information uh, makes us to prevent some troubles. So this is very important work. And we also check Zabbix screens. So cause 
uh, each node sometimes have um, drastically changed of resources. So check the memories or strategies or something like. And so if these uh, resources exponential increase or decrease, we create a new ticket and how to deal with it. And we also check the Kibana queries. Uh, Zabbix is good for uh, real-time checks, but uh, it is very hard to see uh, at a glance. So like these screens, so if the physical nodes are increased, so these graphs are increased so much. So we also uh, filter out uh, some errors by uh, queries and so show uh, newly, uh, newly logs by Kibana. And so uh, filtering qu query is automatically generated from the wiki page. And so Jenkins kindly makes these uh, filtering queries from these wiki informations. So these are niche works and so We've reduced 50% uh, of the niche joke times each day. So recently, uh, we only uh, take uh, four hours or so to check the niche joke works. So even though it is so long, mm, we need to improve more. And so moreover, not only the L1 operation people, but also L1, L2 people uh, can uh, make these tasks. Uh, by so these tools and the knowledge base. And so knowledge base is uh, uh, our next theme. And so uh, what is described to operate OpenStack based systems? So maybe many components and so each components have a spe specific speciality. And so we need to unify all the information to one place. And so when travel happens, we only to see these information and search about it. So it's easier to um, uh, check all components. So we made DevOps system around OpenStack with uh, some OpenStack, uh, op uh, sorry, open source systems. So like uh, Ansible or Jenkins and Gerrit or Redmine and FullND, Davix, Kibana and etc. So, and so mainly L1 operators uh, using these uh, light side tools and then check uh, all information uh, in the lead mines knowledge base. And so then improve L1 members by these CI CD tools and so these circles. And so, what is the uh, knowledge base? So, it is a one function of the lead mine, but uh, it is also be a database of knowledge. And so concentrate all information about operation to one database. And so we can e easily cope with a problem with once someone has already solved. So um, it is very important because we can avoid reinventing the fields and reduce the time to search on the internet. So. If you have a travel, a travels, uh, you only search in the knowledge base. So it is like uh, so <clears throat> goes for us, and we stores over 1,200 knowledge already. And so in knowledge base, not only so know-how and experience. So we also have a tools usage. Uh, I mean, is uh, it is not. Uh, uh, very difficult to understand. Uh, we uh, reload them to easy to understand by using Ansible or something, these tools. And so uh, L1, L1, L2 operators can also deal with troubles uh, if it is already solved or easier. So not only in your task, but also initial response to travels are L1, L2's work in our systems. And uh, it uh, helps L1 members because uh, they can concentrate to the so important travels. And uh, it is also uh, good for reduce spend time to user support or CRCD tasks. 
So not only the travel information, but also we, are, wrote, uh, we wrote, uh, how to use a support or how to um, execute Ansible commands in the knowledge base. So all informations are stored in knowledge base. And so operators only need to fill out template forms and so you can easily execute some commands. And so through this knowledge base, uh, everyone can be non-expert to expert. Because uh, this uh, knowledge base uh, can help you to grow uh, to your more expert. Uh, so it is maybe difficult to understand, so I'll show you a demo later. So when something goes wrong in private cloud, so uh, this is so how to say, uh, troubleshooting uh, systems. When something goes wrong in our systems, so Zabbix automatically detect statement and so showing a newly issues like these uh, figures. And when we're no logs alert from our cloud server, uh, Zabbix automatically make a link to knowledge base. So this is very important because uh, if a lot happens and then they have a link, uh, L1, L2 members can uh, deal with some initial response to these alerts. And so operators only need to access this knowledge base and ignore or solve a lot according to uh, lithium flows. And so, and more, almost all solution in knowledge base has Ansible playbook. So it means uh, uh, all uh, way to resolve troubles are uh, written in the machine language, not the human language. So it is uh, very uh, confirm, uh, confirmed to execute the troubleshoot and so reduce human errors. And so they have uh, guarantees identipot identipotence. So it means if you uh, execute command once or tens or one hundredths, its results are the same. And so it is also uh, useful for non expert can learn troubleshooting how. how Trouble, uh, how to troubleshoot by reading these playbooks. So what command you should do in this program is so ev everything is written in these YAML files. It is very important. So I'll show you an example. So one uh, frequent um, error in OpenStack is a system process down. Some kind of system process is uh, down and when it is a uh, physical node process, uh, instance on these physical nodes also have troubles. And in next example, I demonstration the operation from detection from uh, the some revert bin system process down. So when revert system uh, downs, uh, we can't create GH change instances. Uh, it is very, um, important, uh, how to say, it is very critical, critical errors. So I'll show you movie. So first of all, uh, there is a Zabbix server is shown, and now status is all green. There's no issues uh, shown. And then uh, I try to stop some uh, libvat being process by my hands. So check the status. Now it is working in the so physical node SP001. And so I stop it. And so <laughs> I need to input Stuart's password, and so then the bad pin process is stopping. So check the status. Of course, it is stopped. And then Zabbix will make some mm, alert. Ah, will receive alerts, and so shown the new issue to here. 
So ROG is here. And so check the detailed information by clicking the last change. And so now the status is uh, problem, and it is not solved. So we need to um, deal with this problem. So how deal with it? So we only clicking this issue's title, and so it has a knowledge base link. And so when we got the process down, we should do these things. And in this template, uh, number two shows that uh, you need to uh, make some action or not. And so in this case, uh, Operators need to some actions and so check these flows. And another knowledge base are shown in this. And so I click here and so check how to list your services. So log into the some utilized server and need to mm, execute Ansible playbooks. So to execute command, uh, without some typos, uh, we recommend uh, operators to copy and paste from the knowledge base to the command lines. And so then uh, we need to input host name. So then to copy the host name, uh, move to the Zabbix servers. And so copy them and so paste it and so confirm and so enter service name now the uh, stopping process is a leave but being so copy from here and only paste it and so then play the Ansible playbook so the process is restarted and we need also need to restart the Nova compute process after we start revert bin, then execute the same playbooks and change uh, the service name. So if you want to know uh, what kind of operation is doing in these playbooks, you can check the YAML file. So this is helps operators to be an uh, expert. And then all the registration was done, and so the big issues will be disappeared. And the detailed information is uh, changed to the OK. So that's fine. So these uh, prevent troubles and uh, make some initial response to troubles is uh, uh, too important thing to operate uh, open stacks. And we also uh, make some exhibitions in any issue booth and entity group booth. Uh, you can uh, try uh, these demos in this booth. Uh, please come. And if you have some um, uh, con uh, if you want to make some contact, uh, please contact here. And so, booth is uh, here. And finally, operator training by tre Mr. Tree. Uh, uh. Uh, so, uh, finally, uh, I'm talking about the operator training. This slide shows the user segmentations. We think that uh, there, are, uh, three, uh, there are three categories to request our uh, customers. Uh, firstly, uh, we think about the uh, 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 more right side is uh, super user. So super user can do uh, any, any tasks, design and planning and resource management and operation are all in, our, in, in the super users themselves. So they can have a knowledge and a knowledge base in ourselves, in, in themselves, and have a specialist expert of OpenStack. Uh, 
right side is uh, so uh, uh, using the uh, sorry I forget about uh, using the uh, managed service uh, provider services. So in this services, the user can not uh, doing the everything, anything. Then the uh, service provider can provide the design and uh, planning, resource management, and also operations. So user cannot, uh, couldn't do, uh, can't do uh, anymore about the operations. They can do uh, use the OpenStack environment from remote or uh, using their private cloud environment. So in the middle of this uh, two segmentation, the, uh, there is uh, some our thinking potential users. They can use a design for uh, ask a design for integrators and the planning and resource management and operation are uh, using the, the by themselves. Uh, in this category, the uh, user can. Uh, <coughs> You have uh, some big problem about uh, how to operate the, the uh, private cloud system. We think that the knowledge base with uh, non-specialized engineers will be the solution for them. Uh, this slide shows our concept of operator training. We think that uh, operator training will be a shortcut to become open stack operators. And now uh, there are many uh, of training, the open stack training, uh, uh, but uh, that common way is uh, their target is to be a user, both a user and the integrator and the operators. So uh, in this, in their training, the first uh, our course uh, is uh, first year of what is open stack and studying the architecture uh, and uh, how to install, or how to use by Horizon, how to use uh, API of OpenStack, and how to design and how to operate. But for uh, in, we think that uh, for uh, becoming the user, integrator, operator, there are uh, important thing to know about. But uh, to become an operator only, that uh, there. Uh, Studying the architecture or install or uh, uh, using the API is that uh, this uh, knowledge is uh, ag aggregated to a knowledge base. So user can uh, this in this training user can be a uh, very shortcut to be an you know, OpenStack operation operated. So after that, uh, this uh, this training is our first step to be an uh, operator, but uh, the second step, uh, more uh, uh, training or educated or, uh, to become a super user or super integrator or super operators. And I think that the, to, to become an operation, the, that our program will be a shortcut. I think, uh, we think that the standardized operation knowledge will be the create the ecosystem mm, around that. The figure shows the ecosystem around the uh, standardized operation knowledge, knowledge base. Uh, we think that trading is just one case. There are possibilities around here. Uh, training uh, is the type of, if there are this type of ecosystem will be created and share the knowledge uh, in the community, uh, it will help enlarge uh, OpenStack to non-super users. And this morning, the NEC Shibata-san will talk about uh, uh, super integrator. Uh, uh, in this uh, training, or uh, this knowledge, knowledge base will be a uh, uh, help that this uh, not becoming a super user, but uh, uh, to be a uh, user of OpenStack. <laughs> Uh, we are now plan to start this training operate, training for operators in early next year, uh, and uh, we are collaborating with LPI Japan about the uh, certification of operator training. And also, uh, uh, we think that the vendor or developer will collaborate and uh, create uh, knowledge, their knowledge to uh, uh, their the operation knowledge base. There is may help the the. Uh, Product or uh, their project or, or software. 
and also a super user or integrator will uh, uh, help this knowledge uh, enlarge the input uh, uh, in-house knowledge to this knowledge base and share this uh, knowledge with a uh, community or a more open community of OpenStack users. And uh, this will help the enlarge the OpenStack ecosystem to not the super users. So that is our final, final. Yeah, thank you for listening. And uh, are there any questions? No questions. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>